continued drought in states such as Nebraska will likely show strain growth when new estimates are released January 31st. But with cheaper feed and less severe drought, some farmers and ranchers might be thinking about retaining or buying heifers to expand herds. Late last year, we talked with UNL Extension educator Aaron Berger to discuss how a producer can determine what to pay on a bred heifer. We started by asking Aaron how much of the cow herd we may have lost from a multi-year drought. You know, probably the best numbers we're looking at is somewhere around 5 to 10 percent, and uh, that's really a significant number when we look at the number of cows that we have here in Nebraska. If you're going to think about buying that bred female to slowly restock the herd, what are some things that you want producers to keep in mind when they go about trying to determine if they're going to make it a, make a profit off of that animal? Yeah, when we talk about, about what we can go out and afford to spend for a bred female, whether it be a bred heifer or a mature cow, we're really thinking about a value that an economist would refer to as a net present value. And when we talk about net present value, what we're really thinking about is what is the productive ability of that cow, what we would expect to get from her in terms of weaned calves. And so what we want to do is go through and think through all of the cost and revenue that would be generated uh, from the purchase of that cow. So we're looking at that cow's productive life. Probably a real fair average is somewhere around four to five calves. People frequently think about that cow that has eight or nine, but on average around four to five is going to be an expected productive value from a cow if we're purchasing a two-year-old bred heifer. The other things we want to think about is annual cow cost, and we want to adjust those also as we look forward for inflation and expected increases that are going to occur in production cost. The other thing we want to think about is any death loss that we would incur, as well as projected revenue in terms of the calves that we would get from that cow and the value of those calves. And then finally, we want to think about what is that coal cow's value going to be when she leaves the herd. The other thing we need to take into account is a term that economists call the discount right, or what would that cow investment be worth if we were to put it in some alternative investment. And so here we're really looking at an interest rate in terms of the capital investment that we would expect to get in return on that cow's purchase value. A lot of those things you mentioned, Aaron, are estimates at best because you don't exactly know how things are going to pan out or what the market will turn into. How do you manage that risk of the estimates? Yeah, I think when we think about estimates, we can look at some projected uh, forward prices as we look forward to the future. Obviously, those are anyone's best guess. And so I think we look at historically where we've been at, looking at what the beef demand's been doing, and then also just looking at the position of the cow herd in the United States right now. Uh, we're at historic lows in terms of cow numbers. There appears to be good demand for calves and feeder cattle uh, in the near term. The corn market has gotten back into a rate that seems to be a little more reasonable from a cattle feeding standpoint. So I think you plug all those things in and then honestly you just go out and you start taking what you see as your best estimates uh, based on those information. There are two spreadsheets available that I really think are excellent tools. These are Excel based spreadsheet tools. One from Kansas State University and one from Oklahoma State University that really help a producer I think walk through and put all of the projected revenue in as well as the projected cost. And I think the thing that's valuable about these tools is you can go in and play some what if games, see how that changes, what it would estimate you can afford to pay for a bred female. And then I think it really also just helps you do diligence as you consider the purchasing of bred females under today's current conditions. How timely is this conversation, Aaron? Uh, do you have producers maybe out that way that are starting to think about, uh, about buying that bred heifer to get back in the game? Yeah, we are really having some people take a hard look at, we've had some good moisture this fall. That's encouraging, uh, I think, folks to be a little more comfortable as they look towards forage production from native range and pasture next year. And we also have seen some of these harvested feed prices go down, and as well as the good weaned calf prices we've seen this fall, as well as feeder cattle prices, folks are looking at the opportunity to maybe get back in, start to rebuild the cow herd, and are seriously looking at how they can get back in and purchase bred females. The kicker on this, Aaron, might be uh, the, the tight stock of bred females. How hard is it to find those replacement heifers? You know, I think there's a lot of good demand right now for bred females. Obviously, uh, the area of the country that's gotten some moisture or where we've seen moisture improve uh, has a pretty big impact on this. Uh, even to the south and, and to west of here, we've seen improvement. And so we're seeing bred heifers right now anywhere from that $1,800 to $2,400 per bred female. You know, those are recent market prices here in western Nebraska, eastern Wyoming. And that kind of tends to be what people are willing to pay. And so it appears that there's going to be good demand for those bred females going forward. 
The spreadsheets Aaron mentioned from Kansas State and Oklahoma State can be found through a link on our website. As we mentioned in our previous episode, UNL Extension is offering a series of workshops on ranching for profitability in 2014. Those meetings will take place at eight locations across the state in January. You can find more information on presentations and registration on the BEEF website at beef.unl.edu.